dear student namaskar so from today onwards i am going to start my lecture for class 11 biology on the chapter 1 living world as you know that there is total 10 unit in neat examination in the class 11 there is total 5 unit under the unit 1 there is total 4 chapters namely living world biological classification plant kingdom and animal classification so in this particular video we are going to re read discuss about chapter 1 living world so this is my introduction i am dr nutan prakash vishwakarma having more than 14 years of teaching experience and i have taught thousands of students like you and i hope your aspiration to become a doctor is going to be fulfilled and i'm sure i'll contribute in your success journey so before we proceed for the living world let's understand what is biology so biology means very simple biology is made up of two words bios and life logia so that is the latin word meaning of the bios is life and logia means study of so basically biology is the study of life forms and whatever the processes living processes going on in the body in the organism that is known as biology so biology is the study of living its forms and whatever the living processes going on so all together known as biology so let's understand what is living it's very difficult to define the what is living as you know we all are made up of atom then molecule then macro molecule then organelle then org organelle then cell then tissue then organ the organ system the complete hierarchy of the arrangement is there so we all are made up of atoms and molecules so in the organism these atoms or molecule from which we are made up of they are started interacting in such a way so that there some characteristics comes that is known as growth means organism start growth reproduction development responsiveness means we also respond towards our external stimuli we are being affected by the cold the heat right the pressure the sunlight the photo period exclusively if we talk about the plant adaptation this is one more uh, result of the uh, interaction of the different molecules so that is not adaptation adaptation is nothing just all the organism have to in you know adapt themselves in such a way so that they can survive in the changing environment over a period of time because evolution is the continuous process what is going on so what are the living what are the we have studied what is living now what are the different characteristics of the living beings how you come to know that what are the different characters that living organisms have all right so number one is the growth what is growth if the size of the cell increase or number of cell is the increase that is known as growth so growth you can say in the terms of the cell size and number organ or organism as a whole so that is known as growth and growth is what growth is permanent once growth takes place it cannot be come back say for example if your height is 5 feet 6 inch even if you stop eating stop taking food person will die but his or her height is not going to decrease so that is the permanent and irreversible once it takes place it is not going to be reverted back all right and all the living organism have the capacity to grow maybe it is unicellular or it is multicellular like us we all have the capacity to grow if you talk about the plants plants keep doing growth throughout their life throughout their life span plant keep growing because they have a special kind of the tissues that is known as meristematic tissue that we are going to cover in next uh, in coming lectures but in animals 
एट द सर्टन एज वंस वी अटेन द प्यूबर्टी आर ग्रोथ स्टॉप्स राइट सो प्लांट हैव द कैपेसिटी टू ग्रो थ्रू आउट देयर लाइफ स्पैन बट वी एनिमल डोंट हैव दैट कैपेसिटी ऑल दो वंस वी अटेन द प्यूबर्टी इट डज नॉट मीन दैट सेल नंबर विल नॉट इंक्रीज आर सेल डिवीजन विल नॉट टेक्स प्लेस इट विल डेफिनेटली इट विल बिकॉज continuously in our body wear and tear is going on right to replace the older cell new cells will come just like take the example of your skin daily we bath and we remove the dead cells and from uh, on the place of that dead cell new skin cells comes so that replacement is going on wear and tear if somehow i get hurted if i if there is the wound in my body so that is going to be healed due to the cell division so conclusion is plant can divide throughout their life and they can grow throughout their life but animal there is a certain restriction restriction once animal attain the puberty there is no growth all right so growth means growth have two characteristics first either increase in body mass or increase in number as i already told you in majority of higher animals this is the very important line you must understand in majority of higher animals and plant growth and reproduction are mutually exclusive first we have to understand what is mutually exclusive mutually exclusive means say for example i have the coin right i am tossing it so once i toss a coin two event will take place may take place first either head will come or tail will come if head comes automatically tail will not come and vice versa means both head and tail nullify each other all right so that is known as mutually exclusive event if one event takes place another will not all right so here it is saying as as per ncrt it says that in majority of fire animal and plants growth and reproduction are mutually exclusive means if growth is going on reproduction will not take place at that particular time say for example take the time take the example first once baby birth is there baby keep growing but at that time one month baby one year baby he or she cannot reproduce cannot do the reproduction and once growth attains it uh, maximum uh, uh, height means maximum height of the uh, people if the of the organism say for example once we attain the puberty right we are 21 year old or 16 year old or 50 year, means once we have all the secondary sexual characters develop then we can reproduce take the example of the mango if you sow a mango seed in the soil seedling will come after some time immediately it will not giving the fruit first it will grow in the maturity and then the reproduction will start i think i am clear so growth and reproduction are mutually exclusive all right so one must remember that increase in body mass is considered as growth as i already told you so does only living organism shows growth here is here are the examples take the example of the mountain suppose this is the height of the mountain and due to any disturbance in the tectonic plate of earth it is also possible that height of the mountain can increase here you can see the desert in the desert due to wind speed the sand collected at particular time and it makes sand mold once a storm will come the size of this mold will grow take the example of the boulder with the deposition of the same type of material the size of the boulder may also increase so can you say these non living things are also growing yes it may so it doesn't mean now now see the book is language non living object also grow if we take increase in size due to addition of similar material on their outer surface as i already told you for example mountain boulder and sand sand mold so means non living Also, so the growth. 
means if growth is taking place in some object, maybe it is living or non-living, maybe in any organism, we cannot say if growth is taking place, we cannot say it is living. So that's why although the growth is the characteristics of the living organism, but it doesn't mean that only living have the growth. So on the basis of only this characteristics, we cannot say that this is the living. So that's why the growth cannot be taken as defining property means if it is showing in your examination or just for example that in particular element, in particular object growth is taking place, can you say it is living or non-living? We cannot say. On the basis of just only one character we cannot say. That's why the growth cannot be taken as defining property. Next property, the characteristics is reproduction. Reproduction is nothing, it is formation of new individual, individual of similar kind. So in multicellular organism, reproduction refer to the production of progeny, possessing feature more or less similar to those of parents, means we all are just like same, just like our parents somehow. Okay. So organism, there is various ways of the reproduction that we'll discuss in coming lectures in detail. The sexual reproduction, the sexual reproduction, exclusively if you talk about the sexual means in case of fungi, fungi can make the asexual spore. In lower organism like yeast, like hydra, we observe budding. You can see this is the hydra. We'll take, talk about later on in the cylinder data about the hydra. So you can, you can see here the hydra. Once hydra mature, it starts developing some small bud. Bud will grow and later on the bud will detach from the parent hydra and another hydra will form. Right? So you can see here is the budding, simply the reproduction. In planaria, one more example I would like to give you, the another mode of the reproduction. In planaria, you can see here the planaria. If any kind of the fragmentation takes place due to you know, any obstacle, any, any sharp object, if it cut in three parts, you can see all the remaining part of this one will regenerate. This is the very unique mode of reproduction. So you can see from one planaria, three planaria forms. So, in planaria, it is also known as flatworm. We observe true regeneration. A fragmented organism regenerates the last part of its body and become a new organism. In the fungi, the filamentous algae, the protoma of moss that will cover in the bryophyta, all easily multiply by fragmentation. So this way, if fragmentation takes place, the remaining part of that particular uh, organism will reform. So this is known as regeneration. All unicellular organism, if you talk about the bacteria, the unicellular algae, the amoeba, reproduction is synonymous with growth. What does it mean? Bacteria is made up of a single cell, right? So from one bacteria, two bacteria forms. So means there is the division of the cell. From one bacteria, two, two bacteria forms. So then if the number of bacteria is increasing, here we are not talking about the size. If the number of bacteria is itself increasing, that is the what? That is the growth. So if number of cell is increasing, we also can call it as a growth. Further, the, now the important part is, if any organism is not reproducing, then can we call it as a dead or non-living? Say for example, mule. Mule means, you know, once donkey and horse, female horse breed, then mule form, mule birth takes place. That is known as in Hindi, we call it as a khachar. You might have seen while you are going to the mountain or hilly areas, these mules are using as a transport medium. You can carry the your articles, you can carry your bag and baggages. Sterile worker bees. The worker bees who collect the who, for, who collect the nectar from the flower and make the honey that we consume. They are also for in sterile. The human who don't have the baby, the couple, they cannot reproduce. They don't have the baby. Can you say they are non-living? No. If someone doesn't married, he or she cannot give the birth of a baby. So you cannot say they are on the basis of just reproduction, that person is not reproducing. 
that person don't have the kid so they are not living so again just like the growth although the reproduction is the characteristic feature but we cannot say that is the defining feature all right so reproduction is characteristics of living organism definitely but if someone is not reproducing you cannot say that he or she is not living so no no but although the non no non living object is capable of reproducing or replacing by itself is non living cannot reproduce but all living doesn't guarantee that everybody will reproduce third characteristics is the metabolism and cellular organization for understand what is metabolism in our body in our life our body have to make certain chemicals right and sometime it also have to break the chemicals molecules so if we need to break the molecule first we'll break the molecule in our body in our cell a smaller units will form and energy will form energy will generated but if from the smaller units we have to form the big molecule we have to invest the energy so in our body only two things takes place either breakdown of the molecules or formation of the new molecule as per the need of our body so that is known as breakdown is known as catabolism and if we form something that is known as anabolism and all together we can call it as a metabolism so there is two type of metabolism there is two part breakdown of the molecule and formation of the new molecule as per the need of the body while we break down the molecules we will always get the energy and while forming of the new molecule we have to invest the energy so all together it is known as metabolism none of the non living although none of the non living organism shows metabolism this metabolism only takes place in the living organism that's why we can say that metabolism is the defining property of living organism we can note it down although whatever meta whatever the reaction going on in your body that we also can perform some time in the test tube so can you say that test tube is living obviously no that we are performing in vitro outside the body so that is living reaction but you cannot say that test tube is now living living all right next is cellular organization what does it mean i earlier told you that from atom molecule forms then macromolecule then organelle the cell the tissue the organism the organ the organ system then finally organism so this is the complete hierarchy of the formation of our body in throughout the living body you will not found the tissue forms the cell it is always that cell forms tissue so this is the certain sure hierarchy of the formation so the organism which the object which have these organization that is known as organism that's why it's a totally organized way so that is why we can't as a organism to living okay so cellular organization everywhere in all the living body you will find this cellular organization maybe it is unicellular or multicellular like us so that's why every organism have cellular organization that's why you can call that the object which have the cellular organization that is living so this is again the defining property of living organism so two the growth and reproduction was not defining although it was the characteristics uh, while metabolism and cellular organization is the defining feature of living organism now fourth one consciousness consciousness was what we are being affected by the heat the cold the pressure the touch the other stimuli also so that is known as consciousness means if any organism any organism it affected by its external stimuli maybe sunlight in the case of the plant so that is known as consciousness means organism give the response as per their surroundings so awareness of surrounding is known as consciousness stimuli may be anything we allow we have a lot of sense organs physical chemical biological and against that whatever response we give 
the visible change or reaction which an organism produces as a result of applied stimulus is called response. Just like photo period. Photo period you can see in your surrounding. Many animals you will see that they don't reproduce throughout their year, throughout the year. In a particular season they reproduce. You cannot sow the you cannot sow the seeds and you can get the crop throughout the year. There is a certain you can see the farmers in particular season they grow the particular uh, crop, right? Why? Because for the production of crop, plant need the photo period because weather is not same throughout the year. So all organisms handle chemicals entering their body. All organisms are aware of their surrounding. But, so every living organism have the consciousness. They are being affected by, towards the by the environment and they show the responses. Only human, NCRT writes that only human being is the only organism who is aware of himself. That is has self-consciousness. What does it mean? Take the example of a dog. Dog have only three requirements. Food. If you give the food to dog, the shelter where he or she can protect his uh, itself uh, from the you know, changing environment, and third is reproduction. The same thing you cannot apply on the human. If you keep human in a captivity, give the food, give the give the food, give the shelter, reproduction, no. Our desire, our need is more than that. We want respect, right? We care about the nature. What is going on in other community? That we are. That's why we read the news. News, right? So it is self consciousness. We sometimes we think that for what purpose we came in this earth. So that is no self consciousness. We can think beyond it. So that is known as it is self consciousness. So consciousness is the defining feature of living. So in a one line, if you want to define the living organism, they are self replicating. They are keep evolving all the organism as per the changing environment, and their systems are self regulatory, and they are capable of responding to external stimuli. So this is the simple definition of living organism. Now, let's see another point, diversity in the living world. If you see in all your around, you can found the thousands of the species of the plant, the animals. So how many type of plants and animals are present? That is known as diversity. So there is the diversity of the livings. That's why we can call this a biodiversity. So biodiversity refer to the how many number and type of organism are present on earth. If you see that how many number of species are present on the earth, that is around 1.7 to 1.8 million means around 18 lakhs. So 18 lakhs species of plant and animals are there as of now reported. Out of them, 1.25 million means 12.5 lakhs are of animal species and around 5.5 lakh plant species are reported. The maximum species you can see that is of insect. The second largest group is mollusca, and maximum diversity, maximum number of species of plant are being found in the tropical rainforest where there is the plenty of water. And second maximum diversity you can found the coral reef. Coral reef you can found in the under the sea. There is the deposition deposition of the coral reef, and that is the habitat of many organisms. We'll discuss later on about the coral reef in detail. So, do you think that uh, approximately 18 lakh species is easy to study? No, it's not. So, biologists have devised some techniques so that they can identify easily. They can name the grouping, name and grouping of various organisms, and depending upon their similarities and differences as per their certain rules. So for that one, one new branch came that is known as taxonomy. So taxonomy is very simple. It's a branch of biology which deals with 
that how to identify the organism, how to keep the norm, name of that particular organism, and how to classify, classify those organisms for the ease of study. So taxonomic term was given by the scientist term APG Candole. Father of the taxonomy, the maximum taxonomy work was being done by Carolus Linnaeus, you can see. In short, the Corn Linnaeus or Carolus Linnaeus. And as per the India's concern, H. Santapau, he did the maximum work in the taxonomy. That's why being called as a father of Indian taxonomy. So taxonomy is very simple. If the taxonomy is the branch of science where we can identify the nomenclature, we can keep the name of the organism and we can classify those organisms in a certain category. So let's understand what is identification. Suppose you go somewhere remotely and you found something strange, right? In the meantime, you will think whether whatever object I am watching for, whether it is plant or animal. So you can keep in one category, either it is plant or it is animal. How you can keep? Because you know what are the characteristics of the plant, what are the characteristics of the living organism, I mean the animal. So, identification is a process by which an organism is recognized from the other by already known organism and is assigned to a particular taxonomic group, means you can keep in the, it is a plant or it is an animal. So, that is known as identification. But identification is just not only important, means you say this particular thing is living, but until and unless you don't keep the name of that, how others will recognize it? If just imagine if all of us 140 crore Indians, if we have just only name, if we don't have name, how one we can recognize to each other? So that's why we have to keep the name of each and every organism. So there is need to standardize the naming of living organism such that a particular organism is known by the same name all over the world. And this process is known as nomenclature. Obviously. Nomenclature or naming is only possible when the organism is described correctly. If it correctly it was described, then only nomenclature can be done. And we know to what organism the name is attached to. So there is two types of names are given to the organism. One is common name, another is the scientific name. Let's understand what is common name. It is also known as vernacular name or local name. Local name, as you can see, let me give you the example. If we, in English, if you say onion, in Hindi belt, if you go to North India, people call used to call it as a patch. But if you go to Gujarat, they call it as a kanda. Kanda in Maharashtra. If you go in Gujarat, it is known as Dungri. See how many na name is there? It's a Dungri. So these are some local names. The same object, the onion, the patch, the kanda, the Dungri. If you go to Kerala, Tamil Nadu, maybe their name is different. So common names, the problem with the common name is they differ from region to region and from language to language. An organism may have several names in a given name. In one language, it may have different language, different names. Just let me give you the example. Just like take the example of the brinjal. It's a brinjal. Brinjal have in Hindi, there is two names. Sometimes people called as a bhata in the local Hindi and called as a bagan also. So for Brinzel there is two names, bhata as well as the bagan in only one language. So a common name may have different meaning in different area also. For the same name there is a different meaning. Let me give you the example. If you talk about chokha. And you pronounce it in UP or Bihar, they will call it as a mashed potato, mashed potato with some spices. So that is one diet, I mean one dish that you can have. The same name if you pronounce in the Gujarat, they will understand as a rice. So rice means chokha in Gujarat, but chokha is a dish in Bihar. Is it all right? So there is a many problems with the common name. We want that with the same name throughout the world that organism can be known for. So that's why 
there should be any scientific name and that should be accepted all over the world and such naming must be obviously just like in chemistry you read about the IUPAC how you can keep the name of a particular compound likewise there should be certain rules and based on that rules we can keep the nomenclature and that will be acceptable all over the world and scientific name assure that only one name should be given to an organism so there should be two code for the nomenclature although it is more but as of now i am telling you two things two codes first is icbn international code of botanical nomenclature is if any plant is there their name will be keep kept as the rules of icbn if any animal that will be kept as per the rule of icjn international code of geological nomenclature if any bacteria is there that name will be kept as international code for bacterial nomenclature uh, i sorry i international code for bacterial nomenclature icbcn if any virus name can be kept as icbn international code for viral nomenclature as of now we are concentrating on it on two things as per the ncrt so each kind of organism representing a species is given in different name to distinguish it from the other one has to ensure that such a name has not been used earlier for any other organism so there is two type of uh, practices being followed for providing the scientific name of the organism what is the binomial nomenclature and there is trinomial nomenclature as per your ncrt you have to study about the binomial but uh, trinomial i am also going to discuss what is biological nomenclature binomial nomenclature by means two means your name should be made up of two words only that's why it is known as binomial nomenclature what are the different rules all the rules you have to keep by heart the biological name must be usually written in latin word means all the scientific name of an organism we have to keep in the latin word right and in the italic font what does it mean that should be in the latin word number one and italics means while you are typing through computer that number that word should be tilted to right tirsha hona chahiye tilted to right like this way here you can see the normal text and you can say this one it is tilted right so that's why it is known as this font is known as italics font so wherever you see the typed name of organism you will see that scientific name should be tilted all right so two things we have studied number one name should be in latin and name should be in the tilted form all right and scientific name as i already told you by means two words should be there first word should be genus and second should be species genus name always start with the capital letter while species name start with a small letter let me give you the example say for example i write down homo sorry homo and sapiens so while i am writing the genus genus should be with capital letter and species should be with a small letter it is a rule and if we have to stick with it and there is two thing you can found once you type with the computer now then you have to keep it italics but while we are light writing through pen the problem with sometime many people write straight words some write tilted towards left or right then it is going to be very difficult that's why the another rule is once you are typing in a computer there is no problem you can make it italics but while you are writing with pen and paper you always whatever genus and species you write you just underline underline it so underlining is very important while you are writing but while you are typing in computer there is no need of making it underline just make it italics all right say for example mangifera indica this is the scientific name of mango as you can see the genus is started with a capital letter and species have been started with a small letter so this is genus this is species for homo sapiens for human it is homo sapiens for rice it is oryza sativa for the wheat triticum astivum 
all right okay let's move ahead sometime it also happened that the author suppose i have kept the name of any particular organism so sometime what happened the scientists also write their name after the species so mangifera indica but name should be in the short form just like here it is written mangifera indica lin so lin stands for linnaeus so if you have kept the name of any organism after a species you can keep your name in the short all right it can be so mangifera indica lin means mangifera indica name was kept by linnaeus so while writing while typing this complete name mangifera indica and lin you have to make it italics the lin also and while you are writing with the pen you have to underline all three things there is no space of the confusion you don't think so that i always have to keep the name of the scientist or author only mangifera indica will do enough okay so it indicate that this species was first described by linnaeus all right sometime also possible although it is rare but sometime it is possible that the species which was a single word here in this case the sapiens the sativa sometime it also possible that it is made up of two words take the example of hibiscus hibiscus rosa sinensis this is the scientific name of china rose or shoe flower or you can say the gudhal in hindi so here the rosa sinensis it is made up of two words but to make it a single we have to make it hyphen so hibiscus is genus rosa sinensis is species you don't think so that uh, this is three words it is the single word rosa sinensis so it is also possible if this is the case you have to make it with a hyphen now trinomial although it is out of syllabus but let me tell, tell you it is proposed by huxley and strickland here uh, three words are also used for naming an organism especially the animal there is three things include in it the genus the species and the subspecies so there is three thing genus species and subspecies take the uh, take the example of modern man it is known as homo sapiens sapiens so homo is genus species is uh, sapiens is species and under the species many subspecies are there gorilla 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 if you take about the plant you guys see you see this is the null call gaad gobi bolte hain hindi mein null call the cabbage the cauliflower if you see the uh, scientific name of all three it is brassica oleracea brassica oleracea but the problem is if the name of this is brassica oleracea this is brassica oleracea this is the brassica oleracea but you see the characters are same different what is known as cauliflower cabbage and null call so these are the sub species of oleracea you can kept the third nomenclature the botrytis the capitate and coleropa now it is very clear so trinomial nomenclature sometime we also have to use once in a single species many sub species are there all right the third point is the classification now you have identified the organism you have kept the name of the organism now the thing is that you can keep in a certain category category may be anything with that category many you know characteristics are as associated with it say for example you can keep as a plant you can keep as a that organism is animal you can say it is dog so once you say dog that is another another category you know what are the different characteristics of the dog cat insect kidemocode so you can keep in any categories once you identify a nomenclature so for the in now you can keep in certain groups so that is known as what classification so once we even classification if you say this is the dog if we classify further classification is also possible that which breed of dog it is maybe it is pomeranian maybe it is a alsatian alsatian so classification allow for more specific categorization like alsatian which refer to a particular breed of dog at the moment we use any of these term like animal cat dog insect there is certain associate characters 
with the organism in that group. So, suppose similarly, NCRT says similarly, suppose we were to say mammal, you would of course think of animal. All the animals have the external ears and body hair. This is the common character that all, all mammal have. Likewise in plant, suppose we talk about the wheat, we know what are the characteristics of the wheat, how it looks like, right? So once we say wheat, only the characteristics associated with the wheat will come in our mind, not for the rice. So hence all these dog categories you can keep as a dog, cat, mammal, wheat, rice, plant, animal are convenient categories through that we can use to study the organism. But these are very generic terms like dog, cat, mammal, wheat. Scientifically, we can call it as a taxa. So dog is taxa, cat is, means there is no need of any confusion. Categories means taxa. A dog is also cat, taxa, cat also taxa, mammal is also taxa. Singular term is taxon, plural is taxa. So these are certain categories. Now we are going to discuss about the what are the different categories, the taxonomic categories in very detail in the scientific way. So taxonomy is not something new. Since the civilization of the human being, human was always interested that what are the different organisms for, that may be beneficial for the survival and what the different organisms they are going to harm the human, right? So they started categorizing since our civilization. In early days, human being needed to find source of their basic need of food, clothing and shelter. Hence the earliest classification was based on the use of various organisms. They, organize, they classified into what are the organisms that are beneficial to them, what are the organisms that are dangerous to them. That is a simple classification. Okay. So human beings were since long not only interested in knowing more about different kind of organism. They are just not, we are not just eager to know what are the different kind of the organism present in our surrounding and the diversities. We also were curious that what are the relationship between these different organisms? How is one organism is associated with another, another organism? So evolutionary relationship means how the changes takes place in the organism during the just uh, the starting of the earth. So that is known as systematics. Systematics means what is the evolutionary relationship in the organism. So later on our system, systematics is made up of Latin word system. Systema means what? Systematic arrangement of organism. So first of all system Linnaeus also once again he introduced the term systematics and he wrote a book the name of book is Systema Nurturi. You can see the front page of that particular book. In, in that particular book he around around five thousands of species of the you know, animals he written. So later on previously the taxonomy people used to think that taxonomy is different, systematics is different. Later on it was uh, everybody agreed that systematics is nothing. Systematics, in the systematics you have to include the part of the taxonomy as well as the evolutionary relationship. So systematics include identification, nomenclature, classification as well as the evolutionary relationship among the organism. Means while you are doing the classification, no, you have to consider that what is the different uh, relation in the organism. So that is known as systematics. So what are now we will discuss in detail what is the taxonomic category just like I already told you that there is lot many category dog, cat, mammal, animal all are known as taxa right. So what are the scientific categories the scientists have developed. So classification is not a single step process. If you are to classify the organism you have to pass from the various steps. So what are the various steps of the classification means you have to keep the organism in a particular category that is the multi-step process that is the it makes the hierarchy 
let's understand what is hierarchy hierarchy means say for example in your school the principal is the top position right after principal there is the head teachers under the head teachers lot many teachers are there right after teacher there may be the clerk these are the different positions different category after that maybe the peon right so this is the category one principal under one principal many head teachers are there under one head teacher many teachers are many teachers are there under teacher maybe clerk is working or peon is working right so this is the complete hierarchy that's why likewise once you classify the protein uh, classify the organism lot many categories are there so these categories since they are the hierarchical position that's why all the categories together they constitute the taxonomic hierarchy at this method since it was given by the linnaeus that's why it is known as linnean hierarchy as well the point which i have highlighted here directly question may be asked that each category referred to as a unit of classification multiple categories are there so in fact it represent a rank and is commonly termed as taxon what does it mean by the taxon i already told you that whatever the different categories are there each category is itself known as taxon and all the two categories together known as taxa so taxa is the plural term however taxon is the singular term say for example the year i have written the kingdom so kingdom is one category phylum is one category class is one category so kingdom is also taxon phylum is also taxon class is also taxon so all the categories are commonly known as taxon so there are total seven obligate categories researchers have developed means while you are doing the category uh, classification these seven categories must be there it doesn't mean that only seven categories are there these seven categories are what these are obligate more than that sub categories are also possible sub categories are also there to facilitate more sound and scientific placement of various data just like let me tell you that in the kingdom maybe between the kingdom and phylum we can keep after kingdom maybe it is sub kingdom sub kingdom also there maybe in one kingdom many sub kingdom is there in phylum or division maybe it is if be before phylum super phylum is there super phylum is also possible after phylum under means you can say under phylum many sub phylum can be there there may be super class means one super class many class will be there and in one class many sub class will be there so these are the some additional categories that while scientists do the classification they can keep okay so scientific both in animal and plant kingdom the lowest category if you see is species and highest is the kingdom so lowest is species and highest is the kingdom these all are seven obligate categories that in all the classification it is there so as we go from the lowest rank that is species towards kingdom the number of similar character decreases let's understand first let's understand how to memorize how to mug up all these seven categories in the hierarchical order you can keep the mnemonics you can learn the mnemonics keep pot pot means the utensils in which you are drinking the water or you are taking the food that should be very clean so keep pot clean or family get sick this is the mnemonic that you can remember keep peace kingdom pot means phylum clean 
you can remember with class or you can remember with the order family itself it's written get you can take from the genus and seek you understand as a species so this is the mnemonic you can learn these all the seven obligate categories now if i go in my previous slide it is written as we go from the lowest rank that is species towards kingdom means from downside we are going to upside the number of similar character decreases what does it mean so for example there is two person they belongs or they dwell in a single village all right so obviously if they belong to the single village then their tahsil or taluka or post is going to be same isn't it since they are from the same village so their tahsil automatically or post will be automatically same and obviously their district is also same this is the categories i am telling you the district also will be same the state is also same the country is also same isn't it so if two persons dwelling in the single village same village then their tahsil district state and country is going to be same all right now if you can see if two persons say that they are from the same tahsil then what is going to happen the district is going to be same state is going to be same country is going to be same but since they belongs to one tahsil their village may be different isn't it if two persons says they are from same district then their state then country will be same but their tahsil and village will be different so you, as you can see as we are moving from downside to upside the number of similarity in each categories are decreased if we two people are from the same country good similarity is there but their state district tahsil and village may be different right so as we go from the species to kingdom in the like wise just like in this example the number of similar characters are going to be decrease at the species level there is maximum similarity i think this uh, example is going to help you to understand the concept because you know in the country there is lot many state in one state there is lot many district in one district there is lot many tahsil in one tahsil there is lot of village likewise in one kingdom there is many phylum in one phylum there will be many class in one class there will be many order under order there will be many family in one family there will be many genus and in one genus there is maybe many species all right so let's understand each categories from down to upside one by one the lowest category is species the term was given by john ray you can see the john ray in the picture so what is the definition of the species a species include all the organism that are morphologically similar just take the example of ours the human being doesn't matter whether we are from india the north india the south india the north west northeast or we go to usa or we go to nigeria or we go to pakistan or any other countries we all are morphologically similar and we can able to interpret means if someone someone some indians married to americans they can interbreed and they can produce fertile offspring their kid also will produce the offspring all right so and in a particular area once we understand the species let's understand what is population in a particular area in a particular geographical area suppose in our country how many people of the same species are residing that is known as population so once we say the population of humans in india is 140 crore means all the members of the species so in a particular area how many members are there of same species that is known as population yeah basic unit of taxonomy is known as species however 
the basic unit of evolution is known as population all right so let's discuss the species in much detail why it is showing the produce fertile of spring let's understand example some of the example of the scientific names the species is indica the tuberosum for the potato for tulsi it is osmum sanctum so sanctum the species scientific name of lion is panthera leo leo is the species all right have you seen these examples you must have seen this mule mule means kachar so through kachar or mule people used to transport the goods bag baggages in the hilly area so how mule produce was the donkey miss jack miss male donkey breed with female horse female horse is known as mare once they mate mule birth takes place so can we say that these two species this donkey and horse they can they looks quite similar and they also produce the offspring so can we say that donkey and horse are the same species answer is no why because the mule is sterile mule cannot produce the baby so the definition of the species that's why they should be morphologically similar they can interbreed they can produce their offspring and those offspring also should be fertile if they are not fertile means donkey and horse are the not same species they are from the different species likewise lion and tigress the male lion tigress they can produce the liger you can see the liger the mix character of the lion and tiger if male tiger female lioness they can give the birth to tiglon but they are also sterile they cannot produce the offspring if horse is male a donkey is female they can produce the hini but these all are what sterile so horse and donkey does not belong to same species although they can interbreed but their offspring cannot reproduce so to for being in a single species they must interbreed and whatever offspring comes that also should be fertile then we can say they are in the same species now comes to the genus so under one genus there may be many species obviously so genus comprises and as you go from the species to genus the number of similar characters are going to decrease just like we have seen the examples which has more character in common in comparison to species of other genera genera are aggregate of closely related species all the closely related species we can keep in one genera just for the example the lion the scientific name of lion is panthera leo the for leopard it is panthera pardus for tiger it is panthera tigris so you can see panthera is the genus under genus panthera there is a species leo pardus tigris and they have several common feature and are included in the same genus panthera likewise solanum genus are two species here i am mentioning solanum tuberosum means tuberosum and melangena what solanum tuberosum is the scientific name of potato and solanum melanogena is of scientific name of brinjal so under solanum genus there is two species mentioning here tuberosum and melanogena melon gena you can see here the panthera leo the panthera pardus panthera tigris they are under the same genus that is known as panthera another genus that is felis there is two members felis domesticus means your domestic cat felis chaus so the next category is the lowest was species after that genus and after genus there is the family in one family there may be many genus 
I am sure you might you have already learned what are the different categories and what are their hierarchy. You always keep remember keep pot clean or family get sick. So under one family there will be many genera. So the related genera are placed in the same family. You always remember the example which I have given that in one country there is many state, in one state there will be many district likewise. So in one family there will be many genera, in one genera there will be many species. So the related genera have lesser number of similarities as compared to genus and species I already told you. As you go from lowest to upper category the number of similar characters are going to be obviously decreases. So like all the animals such as lion, the leopard, the tiger, the jaguar, they comes under the genus panthera. And cat from the genus felis are included in the family ferretti. So let us take the example. The family ferretti. In the family ferretti, there is the genus felis and in the genus felis I told you two examples. In the family ferretti, there was another genus that was panthera. And again in the Panthera Leo, Panthera Pardes and all I give the example. Likewise, if you talk about the plant, one family is Solanaceae. In family Solanaceae, there is many genus, Petunia, genus Datura. Likewise, in the cell, genus Solanum, there is the Solanum tuberosum, Solanum melanogenum. that all example I give. In plant, if you talk about, in the plant family, there is always we keep the suffix ac like solanaceae so you can identify this is the name of the family however while you're talking about the animal we always keep the d id after the name so it is known as felidae you can understand this is name of family now move towards after family so after family there will be the order in one order there will be many many family so one order is carnivora and in that family Felidae and family Canidae. Canidae is the family of the dogs. In plant family, Convoluci, Solanaceae are included in the order Polymonial. You can see here again. So in the order Carnivora, we kept the family Canidae and family Felidae. In the order Polymonial, we kept the Convoluci and Solanaceae. This hierarchy is going on. Now after that, it is class. So in one class, there may, will be many orders. So that orders will be like primata is the order. In primata there is many organisms like monkey, gorilla, gibbon. Okay. So in class the mammalia. So in the class mammalia there will be many order like primata, like carnivora. In carnivora include animals like tiger, cat and dog and primata include monkey, gorilla and gibbon. So you can see in one class there is many orders. Likewise, in one phylum, there will be many classes, many classes. All classes will come under one phylum. Now, one thing I forget to tell you, what is division? While we are doing the classification after kingdom, once we categorize the uh, animal, then we can keep phylum. But once we deal with the plant, kingdom planty, after kingdom, if it is plant, we can keep division. Alright. So the only difference in the plant and animal classification, after kingdom in animal, we write phylum, and after kingdom in planty, we can keep division. Division. So phylum and division. Phylum we use in plant, and division we use in the case of the, sorry, sorry, very sorry. Animal we keep in the case of the file, uh, plant, uh, repeatedly I am doing the mistake. Phylum we keep in the case of animal, however, division we keep in the case of the plant. Is it alright? Okay, once again I repeat, while we do the classification of animal, after kingdom we write phylum, while we are doing the classification of plant, we write down the division. This is the only difference. So in one phylum or division, there will be many classes. Classes may be comprising animals like fish, like amphibian, reptiles, birds. So all these animals we can keep in the phylum Cardata, like class of species, 
all the fishes will be there amphibia the reptile the apes and the mammal apes means birds all the birds will be in the apes so there is lot many classes we can include in one phylum and these all categories we are going to study in the chapter number 2 3 and 4 and ultimately the topmost that is kingdom and in one kingdom there may be many phylums okay so in general it include all organism which share a set of distinguishing common character this is the highest category of biological classification plants are put in plant kingdom and animals are included in the animal kingdom so this is all about all the seven obligate categories or taxons now let's move for the point number 1.4 as per your ncert that is known as taxonomical ads what is taxonomical ads let me give you one example like teaching ads teaching ads means what what are the different instruments through that i can teach you better say for example i have the pen tab in which i am writing and making my video all right the pen the camera in which i am recording my video the laptop in which i am displaying my ppt so all these are the teaching aids likewise what are the different things the criteria the instrument through that by using that scientist can easily do the taxonomical study so that is known as taxonomical study means these are various techniques procedure and stored information that are useful in identification and classification of the organism so how many type of taxonomical ads are there some taxonomical ads can keep the dead organism some can keep the living organism in the dead if it is plant we can keep in the herbarium for the dead animals keep kept in the museum if you talk about the living so all the living organism we can keep in the zoological park zoological park is nothing just your zoo and the plants alive plants are kept in the botanical gardens so, so let's understand each taxonomical ads in detail so herbarium what does it mean by the herbarium you might have seen the herbarium files right what have to do you just go in your garden and pluck some twigs the leaf maybe the flower in that also and you just take your book in that book you can keep that particular twig and flower and press it just keep the specimen in the book and you keep the weight over it wait for 10 to 15 days after 10 to 15 days what is going to be happen all the moisture all the water content will remove and your specimen will be pressed that specimen you take make a file stick on it write down all the details from which what is genus what is family right on which particular date you collected this specimen who have collected you can write your own name all the scientific information you can write down in the file in one sheet likewise you make a big file in all the file you can keep different different names so that is known as herbarium file and the place where all these files are being kept that is known as herbarium very simple so what we can keep we can uh, the, write down the date and place of collection english local or botanical name the family of the plant who have collected it so these herbarium files serve as quick reference system in the taxonomical studies suppose if a very big herbarium is there and say any scientist now now this is almost no uh, things are digital now if you want to identify any particular plant you can open your mobile phone with internet connection if you have obviously each and every mobile phone have the internet connection you just use a google lens so in the google lens you will come to know that whatever particular plant you are seeking for its classification it will come to you in within a fraction of seconds but just imagine was internet was not there and you have went somewhere you found one some strange plant you want to identify what is the scientific name of it how you will come to know what is the name of that particular plant in which category what is the family of it it was very difficult 
So at that ca case, you have to prepare the specimen and you can send that specimen to herbarium. They will match with their herbarium and they will come to, then you will come to know what is that, whether that particular plant has been discovered so far or it is the new one. If it is already discovered, then you will get the name of that particular plant. That is very tedious and expensive process. But now the things have been changed. Everything is in the digital format now. So, the storage of seeds from a repository for future use to keep a herbarium file more durable, we use one chemical that is known as mercury chloride. So, you can see the different herbariums here, herbarium files. See, all the details have been written here. Although it is very minute, you cannot read it, but you will understand. So, what is the name of the biggest herbarium? So, Royal Botanical Gardens, that is in Kew, London, that have the largest herbarium and they have stored almost 6.5 million means 65 lakhs of species. In India, Central National Herbarium, that is located in the Indian Botanical Gardens, that is in Sipur, Kolkata. And in India, it is around 20 lakhs of species have been made as a herbarium file. Okay. The Botanical Gardens. Now, in the botanical gardens, what we do? All the plants which are endangered, I mean, you know, not endangered, but there is the risk that they may be extinct in future because we use, the human use it, exploit it at very large level, very large scale. So, the plants are endangered, right? okay? They are in the danger that that species will vanish off. So, all those plants, Scientists grow in a single field, in a single area, and the captivity means protect it. Nobody can pluck, nobody can exploit that, those plants, and they can grow. Government gives the protection. You can visit the botanical gardens, have the pictures and all. So, botanical gardens are a specialized garden which collecting of living plants for reference. Plant species in this garden grow for identification purpose, and each plant is labeled, indicating its scientific name and family. So, once you will visit the botanical gardens in your nearby area, you will find the labeling on each and every plant species. Let us understand the examples of the botanical gardens. The largest botanical garden is again in the Royal Botanical Garden that is in Kew, England and is extended in around 200 acres of land. As per India is concerned, we have the Indian Botanical Gardens in Havla, Sipur. It was established in 1787. And if you are residing in Lucknow, Uttar Pradesh, there is National Botanical Research Institute. There, there is a big botanical gardens. All right. So these are some examples you can keep remember. Next is museum. In museum, what we do? We can keep the collection of preserved plants and animal species also. Animal specimen basically for study and reference. You can find in your school also there is the museum. In museum, there is lot many animals are being kept in a jar. You can watch them. And it is very, you know, important because if some teacher is teaching about some uh, the phylums and he want to show you the starfish. So if you want to see the starfish, it is not available here. You have to go to the marine sea. So, School people, they can make the uh, that animal, they can keep the animal in a jar and for the quick referral system, you can watch them. So, specimens are preserved in container or jar in a preservative. Some preservative we have to keep, otherwise their body will be degraded. Okay. So, that preservative solution, the preservative, the name of the preservative solution is formalin. Sometimes the question is asked that what is the preservative to keep the animals in the jar. So that is known as formalin. If some insects are there in the museum, they can preserve the insect box after collecting, killing and pinning them. As I already told you, animals are preserved in chemical solution, mostly formalin as well as in stuff and skeleton form. What does it mean by this stuff? If the animal is big, say for example, the lion, you have to keep in the museum. If you see the, now it is, a, uh, no, nobody can hunt the lion. 
but 200 to 300 before or 100 years before people used to hunt the lions so you can see the museums their whole lion is uh, you know being kept in the museum what they did they uh, the people uh, used to take out all the digestive system related all the organ inside surgically they remove and inside their body keep the chemicals and the skin is also chemically treated so you can see the lion is just like a living and you can keep up to hundreds of years so large animals like birds and animals they are usually stuffed with the chemicals and preserved you can go and watch them museums also have collection of skeleton of animals next is the zoological park you might have each of us have visited the zoo where different animals are being kept and uh, zoological parks or zoo are the place where wild animals are kept in protected environment under human care doctors are there they are taking care of the animals and all animals in a zoo are provided as far as possible the conditions similar to their natural habitat if you visit the zoological park you will see the uh, different different animals but their structure for living is different so their government is trying to make the natural environment in which these animals are living okay so zoological parks commonly called a zoo they enable us to learn about their food habit and behavior some other categories of the taxonomical ads are there one is known as monograph mono means single right contain information of any one family or genus at a given time like monograph of genus pinus if genus is pinus then definitely there will be many species in the pinus right so scientists particularly target only one genus and under one genus how many species are there they write about that only so it's a kind of the book you can say it's a kind of the book in which there is the relation there is the description of only one genus under one genus how many species are there present that all right or if the family so in one family how many genus or species are there information is there so once in a particular book only a single family information is there of the plants or only single family of the animal is being mentioned that is known as monograph next is known as catalog what is catalog scientists are targeting any particular area say for example scientists go to western ghat so in the western ghat there is lot many variety lot many diversity is there so in western ghat only how many species are present maybe it is plant or animal so scientists arrange them in the alphabetical order that these many species are available in this particular area so that is the catalog so catalog represents the diversity of the organism in a particular area so suppose one went to western ghat another person went to the himalayan region right so that that, that is known as catalog of the western ghat catalog of the himalayan region okay flora what is flora flora contains the actual account of habitat and distribution of the plant species found in particular area means in a particular area just like previously i gave the example you have to record just how many plants are there what are the different species of the plants are present so once we say the flora it means in a particular area how many species of plants are present next is manual manual means what very simple once you buy your mobile are you buy a smartphone uh, buy a tv or ac with that one book a small book comes that is known as manual in that manual all the things have been written how to operate that particular instrument we have to read and we can operate the instruments likewise manuals is what it is are useful in providing information for identification of name species found in an area means manual by using that particular manual if you go in a particular area area you will be able to identify the organism or right, just a kind of a guide if suppose if you get the catalog of any particular area and you go there you try to identify 
the manual will be given by using that manual you will be easily recognize that particular argument so what are the different taxon now next 1.4.5 that is known as taxonomic keys as such i am following the ncrt whenever i think that this is important extra important concept that i am explaining you but i am come up, i am covering here the complete ncrt so what is taxonomic keys taxonomic keys are a scheme for identification of an unknown organism okay and taxonomic keys are based on the contrasting character in a pair that is known as couplet so taxonomic keys are always in what contrasting character i'll let you the example it represents the choice made between two opposite options if you have been given the two opposite options obviously one you have to accept and another you can reject and each statement in the keys lead called the lead let's understand by the example say for example there are one organism you found obviously you have two options first thing come will will come in your mind is it animal or it is plant so two contrasting character okay you recognize it as a animal now again you ask the question does it have the vertebrae column or not so either it have or it is don't have if it have have you accepted it as a vertebrate again you ask the two question does it have fur or not if yes so what if we column it have and it have fur also it will be surely will be mammal so it will be identifying the category again contrasting character you ask if you don't have fur next question does it have feather yes or no if yes it will fit in the bird again question if it don't have the feather does it have a dry skin answer is yes or no one you have to accept so if it is yes it is comes under the reptile next thing is no if you don't have the dry skin does it have the scale answer is yes then it is fish if it no then answer is amphibian so now you can see every time you can get the lead the contrasting character one you have to accept another way you have to reject and that's how you can keep the organism in a suitable category so this is carried out for an organism by determining its similarity with an already known organism and separate taxonomic keys are required for each taxonomic category like family like genus like species this is the very simple example i gave you so this is the end of the chapter number 1 i hope you enjoyed the lecture and for notes if you want these notes what <clears throat> which i am explaining here and you want to apply for the test series so that better way you can prepare for your neat examination in the description box the link have been given for our application you can install that application in your mobile phone and you can attend our live lectures as well you can get the notes you can get the practice session also and perfectly you can prepare for the neat and if you like the video my narration my notes please hit the like button and subscribe also so that once i upload the video you can get the notification thank you very much see you in the next lecture